In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to execute Python scripts from Outlook using VBA. But even better, you'll learn how to create your own custom ribbon to organize and easily access your Python scripts. This video is part of a series on automating Outlook with Python. If you need to install and set up PyWin32 for this project, I'll put a link up at the top of the video. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is set up Outlook. So what we need to do is activate the Developer tab if you haven't done this already. Navigate to File, Options, Customize Ribbon. Then on the right, there will be a list of options. You want to click the checkbox for Developer to activate the Developer tab. The Developer tab will allow you to open up a developer environment where you can write some VBA code. But don't worry, the amount of VBA code we need to execute a Python script is absolutely minimal. Okay, now that this is done, you may need to adjust your trust settings. Go back to File, Options, Trust Center, Trust Center Settings, and Macro Settings. You have a few options here. I recommend Notifications for All Macros if you're not comfortable enabling all macros. The only difference is that whenever you start up a session of Outlook and try to run your macro, for the first time during this session, you'll need to click a pop-up notification to give permission for your macro to run. However, if you're confident that you're not going to be running any unsafe macros on your machine, you can click on Enable All Macros, and then you'll be free to run any macro without having to explicitly give it permission every time. All right, in order to execute the Python script from Outlook, it needs to be executable from the command prompt. The reason is that essentially what we're going to do here is use a VBA shell command to execute the commands we would typically execute by typing them directly into the shell or the command prompt. Before we get started, you'll want to have your scripts placed in a folder that you're going to access from Outlook. I've placed mine on my desktop for this example, but I'd store them in a more permanent location for your project. If you want to download a few test scripts that I'm going to use for this project, feel free to grab them from the links in the video description. Otherwise, feel free to use your own scripts. For this demonstration, I'm going to use a simple script that creates a happy birthday email and displays it to the screen so that I can continue to fill out the recipient and then send it. You might recognize this from a prior video. All right, now we're ready to add our scripts to Outlook. To do this, go to the Developer tab and then click on Visual Basic. What should open up now is a VBA developer environment. You should see a project explorer on the left hand side of the screen. If not, click on view and then project explorer. Next, right click on project one, then click insert. Then click module. At this point, a new module folder should open up and a workspace for this module should be in view. This is where we're going to create some code. What we're going to do is create a subroutine in VBA that calls the shell to execute a Python script. If you're running your scripts from the system installed Python, then this will be very simple. And what I mean by system installed Python is that you're not using virtual environments or anything special. You can go to your command prompt, type in Python and the name of your script and run it. If that's the case, all you need to do is create a subroutine, use the shell command and type your command in as a string. Now, if you're using a virtual environment, it's a little more complicated and you'll need to either run it as a batch file or you can simply daisy chain the commands you would typically use to activate your virtual environment and then run the script from the command line. You can chain the shell commands with the ampersand character. In my case, I need to execute three separate commands to activate my virtual environment and then execute the script. However, your process may be different just mimic the steps you would normally follow when you execute a script from shell, except that you would chain the commands with an ampersand character. Using the same procedure, I'm going to go ahead and copy a few more just for demonstration, as this process is, is exactly the same. You can test that this works now by pressing the F5 key while in developer environment. This will either run the command directly or prompt you to choose the macro, which you can then select and run. Excellent. Now that you've set up a macro to run a Python script, we're going to build a custom ribbon with custom groupings to organize the commands. So first, right click on your ribbon and click customize the ribbon. 
You'll recognize this is the same option menu that you use to activate the Developer tab. Now, on the right hand side, click the button New Tab to create a new tab. A new group will be created underneath the new tab, so go ahead and click on the new tab. Then click Rename and rename the tab. I'm going to call mine Python. Okay, next click on the new group and click the Rename button. I'm going to call this group Templates. Then click on the New Group button to create another group, and then I'm going to call this one Email Management. So on this Python tab, I'm going to have two groups, one called Templates, one called Email Management. You may have different or, or additional groups that you want to create, and this is the process that you'd use to create those. Okay, so now you should have a tab called Python with two groups. We don't have any commands in the ribbon yet, but we're going to get to that. So click on the templates group that we just created to select it. If you want to add a command to the group, on the left hand side there's a pane that includes a combo box for selecting various types of commands. So what the one that we're going to choose is called macros. If you click that option you'll see a list of available macros that you've created in this workbook and which have our Python commands stored in them. So click on happy birthday, then click the add button you should now see the happy birthday macro added to the templates group. If you accidentally added it to another group, no problem, just click it, then click the remove button, and then try again. If it's not already selected, go ahead and select the happy birthday command we just added, then click rename. Here you can not only rename your button to something that looks a little bit better, but you can also assign an icon to the button. So let's name this happy birthday, and then I'm going to select this colorful box icon. Now just for demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and add a few more custom commands that I've created for myself, just so you can see what it looks like on the ribbon. Now click the OK button to close the option screen and take a look at the new ribbon. Now if I go to the Python ribbon, you'll see the new happy birthday button in the templates group, as well as a few other commands that I've added to the email management group. Now, if I click the happy birthday button, I'll get a nicely formatted email that I can now finish and send. By leveraging a little bit of VBA, and I mean very little, you can gain access to a full range of easily accessible Python scripts that you've designed to automate Outlook, all in a great looking customized ribbon. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if so, click that like button and subscribe to see more content like this. See you in the next video.